Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, coming at you live on our Facebook Live with the one and only, the real deal, Chris Real, Facebook ads expert extraordinaire. And today we're going to talk about the real, the raw, untold truth. Realtors will not tell you about why they're not sending you all their buyers all the time, making you their exclusive lender. This is the stuff that you wish they would just be up front and tell you straight up, but they're not. They're pussyfooting around and they're just going along with day-to-day -day business. And frankly, in many cases, they just couldn't care less about taking the time to tell you because they got other stuff to do. They're taking names, they're kicking ass, they're chewing bubble gum, they're crushing it. And you're just not on the radar for whatever reason. Today, you're going to find out what that reason is and precisely how to fix it. So Chris, thanks for hanging with me today, brother. This is going to be fun. Hey, man. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh Look forward to it, man. Yeah. And as you can see, guys, if you're seeing the visuals, Chris is uh, suffering in the sun, unfortunately. Uh, so you're going to have to pray for him. Him and his family are on vacation right now. They got their uh, waterfront uh, cabin situation on the lake, and they're going to have to suffer through it all week. So if you believe in the power of prayer, pray for that guy. He's going to be suffering through it. That's why, uh, you know, he was begging me to do this Facebook Live so he can get out of the sun and, uh, you know, get into... Uh, a little bit more comfortable conditions by flapping his lips for a few minutes on this Facebook live. So yeah, I'm here yeah, to serve yeah. you, brother. I'm here to serve you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did. I had to shut the window so he couldn't hear all the jet skis and the boats going by. <laughs> I <laughs> know all, all the howls and screaming and the, the wailing and gnashing of teeth out there. I'll tell you, it's yeah. to make, make a man grimace. Yeah. So uh, all kidding aside though, Chris, you know, you've been in the game for uh, 20 years on the front lines as a mortgage professional. So, you know, as, well as anyone else listening or watching that it ain't any easy feat uh, without the secret sauce and without the uh, proper know-how. It ain't an easy feat to get the attention of realtors, let alone top producers, let alone making that top producer put you on their speed dial and have you be their exclusive partner. There's a few uh, needles we need to thread to make that happen. And it seems to be for a lot of people kind of like the elusive butterfly, you know, it's kind of like the Loch Ness monster. You talk about it, you, you think about it, but you never actually see it. Same sort of thing here where it's like, you know, it's, it's almost a figment, a figment of people's imagination. This idea of locking in a top producer that's doing 30, 40, 50, 70 plus transactions a year and to be their top dog, to be their one and only, to have yourself on their speed dial and to get all their buyers all the time. You know, that seems like the Loch Ness Monster. It seems like it's the elusive butterfly. So we're going to cut through the bullshit, the BS and the hype today. And we're just going to talk about, uh, first off, why it seems so elusive. Why? What's the real raw truth? Let's start with what realtors would tell you if their heart was big enough and they were sufficiently inspired to tell a loan officer why they're not making them their exclusive lender. What are some of the top reasons why they're not uh, jumping ship from their current lender, who oftentimes just provides great rates, great service like everyone else, but doesn't do anything beyond that. And still they stay loyal to them. Still they stick to them like super glue. Still after years and years and years, they're their guy, even though all they do is just service a good loan. They don't do anything beyond that. And yet, we might have all kinds of impetus, motivation, and commitment to deliver extraordinary value way beyond that. But for whatever reason, it's not landing for the real estate agent. They're not giving us the time of day. Give us the top two or three reasons why that uh, is. And let's just cut straight to the real raw truth that the realtors are telling them. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and, and I've spoken in front of, you know, thousands of realtors uh, at a time. So I, I, I've got a pretty good gauge. Um, and been in the business for a long time. Um, I kind of know what they what they're looking for. Here, here's here's the real truth. Um, number one, some of them just have great relationships with other LOs. Like mm. in other words, it could be their uncle, cousins, brothers, nephews, sisters, and like you just you're never gonna get you're never gonna penetrate that relationship, right? So let's say like out of a hundred, like or like out of, out of a percentage, maybe ten or fifteen percent. Like you're never gonna be you, you you literally you're never gonna be able to break that bond and, and because it's it's you know it's a bond that's family like you're not gonna typically break a family bond right so mm -hmm. 
you know, it's a relationship that that they've had for for a long time. It's family like and or it is family. Right. And so you should be able to weed that out very quickly by asking proper questions. That's what we teach um, in in uh, in our coaching programs, you know, in your coaching programs. Dave. So um, so let's just say that's 15 percent. But the other, you know, the other 85 percent or so, um, the, the next thing is, is. Most folks, meaning um, loan officers, they're not uh, they're not positioning themselves correctly, and, that, and that's really what it is. It comes down to, you know, um, and we we've talked about this before, but it's more like you know your your upfront value proposition, and sometimes some of them don't even have one. A loan officer don't even have an up, a value proposition, um, but more so it's like, hey, you know, I've got great rates, I've got great service, send me work, and and. You know, the, the objection there, it, well, there's usually no objection, okay? When you're sitting down with a realtor and any of you guys that are loan officers can relate to this. You're watching this either or, you know, watching this live. You're watching it after the fact. You're listening to it on the podcast. Here's the God's honest truth. When you're talking to, when you're sitting in front of a realtor and they're yesing you to death, you're never going to get any business from them. Yes. Yeah, cool. I'll send you some work. Oh, very cool. Let's set another meeting, right? They're yesing you to death, right? After you told them that you get great rates, great service, I promise you I'm going to communicate all that good stuff, what you should be doing as a loan officer anyway, right? Mm -hmm. so, and and there, so there's no objection. The realtor doesn't give an objection. It's cool. Yeah, everything sounds great, Chris, if I'm the loan officer. I'll Let's, you know, let's, let's hook up at a, at a later date. I'll definitely send you work. How many times have we heard it? Right. Yeah. And then you get so PO'd as the, as a loan officer. And you're like, well, you told me you're going to send me work. Why aren't you sending me work? Here's the fa here's the fact. You didn't do a good job finding out how you can help them grow their business. And that's mm. the realtors don't want anything else other than Great rates, great, you know, great service and all that good stuff. That's part of being a mortgage professional, by the way. Right? right. Like you should have that. You should have great programs. You should have good great, great rates, great turnaround, great underwriting, great processing, great communication, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is you need to find a way, which obviously, you know, our guys do, but you need to find a way to figure out and position yourself as a value added resource over and above what you do on the mortgage side because mm -hmm. everyone can do that right absolutely everybody 90 percent of them can do it okay you need to provide yourself or position yourself as a value-added resource to help them ready help them grow their business it's very simple help them grow their like i'll say it a thousand times help them grow their business and in turn they'll give you work if you can show them how you're going to make them money then they will give you work and that's like that's kind of the bottom line right so, yeah. And there's a big piece missing for a lot of people where they feel like they've got a unique value proposition. They feel like they've got something to offer, but for whatever for whatever reason, it's not landing for the realtor. They're reaching out to them. They're not giving them the time of day. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, they're, they're maybe doing the yesing them to death or they're just ignoring them. So there's a piece in this where you can have something of value, but if it's not being received and if it's not connecting with the heart and mind of the realtor where they're saying yeah i'm interested let's meet or yeah you know i would like to talk to you more about that obviously there's a disconnect so what are some of the reasons why a real a mortgage professional may have a compelling unique value proposition and yet it's still not actually creating traction on the front lines when they're making those overtures and trying to make some connections with top producing agents. What would you say are the top, you know, two or three reasons why, for whatever reason, it's not landing and they're not getting traction? Um, you know, one of them is, like I mentioned before, they might just have a, a, a solid relationship with a familial type relationship. Right. That's so, one they of see them. It, so they see it as, uh, an, you know, an exclusive thing where if they say yes to you, then they're saying no to their current LO that they're already married to either literally or emotionally. And yeah. so they feel like, you know, they're almost, uh, you know, committing adultery by saying yes, or even entertaining yeah. the idea of saying yes to your proposition. So that could be one reason. What are some other reasons? 
Um, you might have a great value proposition, but you just don't know how to portray it correctly. You know, mm. so in other words, Where I might have the ball there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, <clears throat> most LOs think their job is being a loan officer, right? right? So your job is being a loan officer versus your job, frankly, <clears throat> should be being a, a good marketer. You should be, you should be, um, you should be practicing your pitch, marketing pitch, more so than reading underwriting guidelines, right? <laughs> and so that's where that's where a lot of people feel like I need to know this, that, and the other about about underwriting. Where most you know most shops that are you know worth their salt, they have a a underwriting desk they can call twenty four hours a day or whatever and get a quick answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll they, cover that bridge when we get to it. Let's get some loans in the door first, right? Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. if you don't know how to market, you're going to have skinny kids. Exactly. And I, th I think that's more so um, the, the real issue um, is that they just, they might have a good unique value proposition. Either their company has a good, um, good marketing kind of product or their, um, you know, they're, um, they, they even, they, you know, they have a good marketing product where they might help be able to help either realtors and, or, um, you know, their teams position themselves, brand themselves, et cetera. A lot of, a lot of companies have that. The problem is, is they don't have a, they don't, they don't have a good way of crafting the pitch mm -hmm. and or finding during a discovery meeting, what the pitch what how to craft the pitch so in other words <clears throat> i sit down with a realtor we ask a bunch of different questions all i'm looking for is a need mm. right like do they have a crm do they have a um you know what are they doing for their marketing are they following up with leads are they buying leads what does their follow-up look like how you know what's our roi in their leads and as soon as i hear i don't know then our guys have, you know, it's not just a lot of people are just pitching lead services, right? Our guys have the ability to really dissect, right, an overall marketing plan and put it together. But all we're trying to do is as, as loan officers and what we teach is find out what the need is and sell to the need. It's called requirements-based selling. Very mm -hmm. simple. For all you guys that are out there um, that are listening to this, if you haven't read Neil Rackman's book, Spin Selling, read it because it's all about needs-based selling, okay? RBS, requirement-based selling. Find a need, sell to the need, fill the void. Once you do that, you will um, – your whole sales process will be a lot easier as long as you understand that <clears throat> your sales process isn't selling a loan – or you're, you know, selling your programs to the realtor. Right. Your selling process should be finding a need, selling to the need. Now, shoot, that need might be um, part of the loan process. Might be bad communication. They have terrible communication with their current rep. They like them. They get the you know loans closed on time, etc. Terrible communication. Every once in a while, that is, that's the case, right? Well, great. You sell to the need, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when you're when being asked. <clears throat> You know, going through the, the the process of finding out what the need is, most of it is I just don't know how to get more listings. I just don't know how to get more, you know, more business. That's typically the need. And then you just sell to the need. Our guys, that, that's a very simple, easy way for our guys to get in. So I think the, the majority is is they 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 might have a good value proposition. They just don't know how to work it in to right. the meeting. Right. And a lot of people just, you know, they'll just go in and be like, hey, I can offer this, 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 this. Like it's like the machine gun approach. Right. Mm -hmm. I can offer all these different services. And the realtor's like, well, shoot, that's a lot of shit. You sip, know? sip of the fire hose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like they just get knocked back like 50 feet by the fire hydrant hose where right. they didn't, you know, they didn't need to do that versus, you know, versus having a strategic way to have that discovery meeting, right? And pitch that upfront value pop proposition by just asking questions to find the need 
right? And then you just sell to the need. And <clears throat> this is done in a two in a two call type thing, not a one call thing, right? right. And that that's realtors, uh, loan officers. This is their gig. Um, and and now more than ever because we're in a refi market here in the states, but they want instant gratification, right? So. You know, I want to call, I want to sell a, a rate, I want to save them 200 bucks a month, I want to lock the loan, I want to send docs out, I want to get them in, I want to order the appraisal, move on, right? Th but you can't treat a relationship with a realtor, which is long lasting realtor partnerships, you can't treat that, you, you can't treat that meeting like that. So in other words, I want to get in, have the coffee meeting, find out everything about that agent in 15 minutes, and then, oh, they're going to send me their work. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's asking so for marriage on the first date generally doesn't yeah. work very well, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so you know, what we what we teach is get it, you know, in depth um, information about that realtor. Like, grab it. It's all about the realtor. We don't even talk about our services. Mm -hmm. it's all about that realtor, right? And then sit back, relax, take a look at it, and say, you know what? You give me a lot of information. Here's what I'm going to do. You think we might be able to, can I give you 10 or 15, can I grab 10 or 15 minutes next Tuesday as well? I just want to take down all this info, really digest it and really see how I can help you grow your business. And it's simple from there. You just look at all their needs and fill your, you know, fill your services with the need mm -hmm. and present, right? But that's not the case with the majority of the agents. I mean, right. the, majority of the loan officers in the agent meeting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're they got the microwave mentality. Let's have a one hit wonder and knock it out of the park and ask for marriage on the first date. Give them a great first impression. Sell them on myself and my services. And that should be enough to convert them into a new partner. Get them to drop their old partner like a hot potato and latch on to me and stick to me like super glue. Well, obviously, that doesn't work very well. Anyone who's been on the front lines for any period of time knows that to be true. <laughs> So the one hit wonder, the one meeting close with real estate agents generally does not work. We know that to be true. And yet still loan officers attempt to do it because they don't know anything else to do. And uh, so you make a great point that we need to treat this as a long term play as opposed to a short term play. We need to diagnose before we prescribe. Can you imagine a doctor prescribing without first diagnosing that's malpractice guys that's what we call malpractice same thing with your business that's malpractice and yet so many people do it because they just don't know anything else they don't know what they don't know right so that gives us some strategy some clarity around the overall game plan and yet still where a lot of mortgage professionals get stopped and get thwarted and are limited is in the initial stage of just getting the appointment yeah. They're calling the same realtors every Monday, 40 realtors every Monday, because that's what some so-called experts are telling them is the smart way to grow their business. Or they're cold calling every Thursday, the same realtors or new realtors. And these realtors aren't picking up the phone uh, or they're not responding to email or they're just not responding period to anything or they pick up the phone and they're like, no, I'm interested. I'm not interested or I'm good. Or I already got a, a guy or a gal or, you know, thanks, but no thanks. And so mm -hmm. where a lot of loan officers struggle is just getting the freaking appointment, let alone anything else, just getting to first base, let alone third and, and home base. So tell me about where people are going wrong on that phase of the, the process is just mm -hmm. getting the appointment because a lot of loan officers are, you know, following old hat Cro-Magnon caveman methods from the dark ages from so-called experts that are, you know, it's like the blind leading the blind. They're in the dark ages. They don't realize it's the 21st fucking century and that there's technology that can work while they're not working. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to dig a, you know, uh, they're trying to dig a hole with a tiny little spoon instead of pulling out the excavator even though they have an excavator sitting right there that they could just stick the key in the, in the ignition and drive away with. They don't realize that, you know, they could actually use these types of technologies to do some heavy lifting for them. And when they do make the overture, it's just not landing. They're not getting the appointment. So tell us about some of the, uh, some of the pitfalls they're falling into in, in terms of just getting the appointment that they need to be aware of to uh, avoid those landmines. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, 
I'm always one to be very direct and to the point. In other words, you know, realtors, a realtor's, um, a realtor's time's worth money too, right? To them. So, you know, when I know, and it, it, like, I know just by, just by the virtue of how many realtors we touch on a daily, weekly basis and over 20 years speaking to so many in, in seminar format, et cetera, I know what their needs are and their need is they they need to get more business. They want more commission income, guys. That's it. Yeah. yeah. The, end, the end of the story. So having known that, Doran, so having known that, if I call a realtor up on a Monday morning and say, hey, 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 Doran. Uh, this is Chris here with, you know, XYZ Mortgage. Hey, how was your weekend? Did you work or did you play? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is, this is a, this is a true, this is a true <laughs> right. they're teaching. This is the secret sauce, guys. This is the cutting edge. Get did ready. Here it is. Oh, <laughs> um, no. Uh, Chris, I, I, I worked a little bit, played a little. Oh, tell me about your work. And what are they thinking, by the way, after the, you've done this for five freaking weeks straight, right? Yeah, you, th that's what you want. Like that, that's yeah. like they know that they're you're you're prying for something, right? Yeah, they know you're you're fishing for something, but you're not yeah. being overt oh, and God. forthright and transparent about saying it. You know, right, right. It, it's kind of like the kid coming up to you and say, "Daddy, um, uh, would you like some ice cream?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, no, I wouldn't, but would you? <laughs> It's like it's like my th four year old coming up to my. Um, then this this is true. This is a great analogy, actually. My four year old coming up to my wife and saying, "Mommy, you're so beautiful. Can I have a gogurt?" <laughs> no, that's, that's what he does. Butter but, her up. Butter yeah, her up. He's smart. He's, he's smart. He's, he's, smart. Been, he's, been, he's been learning well from daddy. He's been he's been learning well from daddy. That's right. Right. So. So they, they're not dumb either. Realtors are not dumb either. Did you work or did you play? Ah, shit, Chris. You know, like this is the fifth fifth week in a row on a Monday. You called me and shit. You're like, I, I work. I told you. I work on the weekends and I play. <laughs> so. Same so, answer as last week. Same answer as last week. Right. And then, oh, no, all I did is play. And in the back of my mind, as a loan officer, I'm like, shit, I don't want to talk to you now. Like, you don't have any referrals for me. Like, uh, right. oh, did you play? oh, really? Tell me a little bit about what you did. Oh, we went jet skiing down the Cape. Oh, did you really? Oh, cool. I'll, that's awesome. You're going to be on vacation in the next two weeks? Yeah, awesome. I'll give you a call a couple of weeks. Like, I, I'm not interested. Or I said, uh, hey, you know, I played. I mean, I worked all weekend. Oh, really? Tell me about that. Oh, we had an unbelievable open house. We had 50 people through the door. Hey, listen, do you think I might be able to pre-approve some of those people? Like, right? Like, they know what you're looking for. It's like, just so – so so it's it, it it's all take it's 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 never a it's never a, a a reciprocal relationship with a realtor and a loan officer ever. It, it's and called it, a leech loan officer. Yeah, yeah, right. And so, and, but but truth be told, that's how it's always been. Like it's not. It's a very hard process for a loan officer to give give referrals back to realtors. It, it is. It, it really well, unless, is. unless they actually realize what business they're in which is right. the marketing business, not the mortgage business. Once right. they understand what business they're in and they prioritize their daily calendar and their investment in their own personal and professional development accordingly, it becomes a hell of a lot easier because they're actually developing marketing muscle every day that they can use in their own business, leading by example in their own business, and then turn around and naturally inspire and influence their referral partners to do likewise because they're owning it. They live it. They breathe it. They eat it for freaking breakfast every day as opposed mm -hmm. to, oh, I'd like to send you more business, but I have no freaking clue how to do it. You right. know? Who wants exactly. to partner with that guy? Yeah. I mean, what am I going to do? Send, send, you know, Sally Smith, the realtor, um, referrals from Mike Smith, the realtor's clients. Like it's, it doesn't, right? Yeah. So, or here's my credit card. Let's do Zillow together so I can be a replaceable commodity and sift through a mountain of shit leads so right. that you can maybe get one out of every 100 or 200 to convert. That sounds like a great idea. And by the way, if you find anyone else who's willing to pony up more dough than me, you can replace me like a replaceable cog in the wheel and find someone else. I yeah. mean, what kind of marketing plan is that? And that's, yeah. Unfortunately, what most mortgage professionals do because they just don't know what they don't know. They think that's working smart. Yeah, 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 right. And so, and listen, I've done it all. I've done, I, you know, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars a month on Zillow with realtors, um, actually without realtors. <clears throat> I've spent, I've, 
we've had, and this is before Zillow, Realtor.com. Um, this is when it was the real estate book. That's the, that's the only thing that was out, right? So in our area, people would come and say, hey, listen, will you sponsor an ad in the real estate book, right? And, right. you know, you're just doing it to strengthen the relationship. But what you're doing is you're buying the business. That's what you're really doing, right? right. And so, and, and you know, frankly, I don't see, like, I don't see a problem, a total problem with that. Um, if if both parties are, uh, are, are, are winning, the majority of the times, though, that in loan offices that are, re, that are listening to this, the majority of the time, not all the time, but the majority of the time, a Zillow spends a waste of money. And especially when the the realtor is actually following up on the leads, because the majority of the time they're not following up properly. I mean, and especially the considering yeah. they're, they're feeding the monster that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> right, right. As, right. as a direct competitor. Yeah, that that's a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother, uh, Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so so to, to get back to the question is, you know, what challenges are, do they have? Well, the challenges are just in their approach. Their approach just sucks, and 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 they don't. I mean, the majority of them, the the, the approach is just not beneficial. It's always. And I'll go back to the goger. It's like, mommy, you're beautiful. Can I have a goger? Right? And it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's hey, a little, a little contrived. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? Work or play? Oh, cool. Like you're sounding interested. And then, oh, can I have? Some, can I have a referral? Like th that's just the bad way. I mean, versus our guys. Um, we teach them not even to talk to the realtor, number one. And um, all we need is we need to vet out some good producing realtors. And then we just see the ones that want to talk to us. And um, Zero and, cold calling. Yeah, no cold calling. Imagine that. Zero cold calling. Yeah, I see the well, ones that- 21st really talk century to. marketing, guys, not caveman marketing. <laughs> like technology do it for us. And then, um, you know, we we just let the, you know, the, let the people that are interested rise to the top. And the people that are interested- we already know do business because we vetted them before we actually reached out to them. And, uh, you know, and then once we get in front of them, it's not product, service, product, service. It's let me learn a little bit more about you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then fill the need. Most of the time, the need is, can you help me get more business? Um, and we give them a solution and then we're off to the races, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's really like the biggest problem is their approach sucks. That's why they can't book the meeting. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they're doing a lot of heavy lifting they shouldn't be doing. Like they're doing manual human effort, pick up the phone and smiling and dialing every Monday or every Thursday or whatever their schedule is. They're calling the same realtors or they're calling new ones. But the the big problem is is twofold. Number one, they are doing a lot of heavy lifting that they should be using technology to do. Mm -hmm. So while, you know, Joe Schmo LO is literally picking up the phone and dialing each one of them and getting uh, eight out of 10 calls hitting voicemail and wasting a ton of time hitting voicemail day after day after day, we're uploading a list of 20, 30, 40, 50 top producing agents into our system. Bada bing, bada boom. It's rocking out text messages, voicemails and emails on autopilot. And we're booking appointments like a hot knife through fricking butter. I mean, for example, um, one of our clients recently, he booked 11 appointments in one day. Yeah. In one day without making a single cold call. Yeah. Not a single cold call. That's what I call working smart guys as opposed to just working hard. So so, so in the caveman, you know, in the caveman mentality, um, because I know it, I know it well, <clears throat> um, that those 11 appointments would be a week's worth of work. Oh, at least maybe a month's worth. Yeah. So, so point is, is like you can you can build the house with a uh, you know um, with a hammer and chisel, or you can take an air gun and fifteen you know fifteen laborers and a crane and build a house in two weeks. And an excavator, um, as opposed to a shovel. An excavator, right? <laughs> instead of a shovel and a pickaxe, you know, <laughs> like building the pyramids with uh, you know with with just you know. I, I, um, what, do they, what do they call those dollies, a rope and dolly, or, or and, uh, and, and oxen? And yeah, the oxen. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So there's just better ways to do it now, and and so unfortunately, and so so do you're gonna be like, hey, Chris and Dorian, like you guys are just shallow, man. Like you you tell me you don't have to establish a relationship with a realtor. That's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, I'm saying that you need to go deeper once you get the meeting. 
I'm just yeah. saying that there's a better way to actually get the meeting than making dumbass cold calls every single Monday morning. Um, and then, and then, you know, taking your, your bottom 10 out of your top 40 and replacing it with new people. Cause, cause you know, those 10 got pissed off and they don't want to talk to you anymore. There's a better way, you know, yeah. so everything evolves. Shoot. We used to have a, uh, you know, when when I owned the mortgage company, we had a, we had a team of fifteen inside, uh, you know, telesales reps. Right. Everyone is taking appointments just before NMLS. Call like, center. There's a better way to do it now, right? Yeah. So it's all about efficiencies. There's no right. brownie points at the bank doing it the hard way. Yeah. Right. No right, right. brownie points for working longer and harder for your money. And if you're gonna work, you might as well get freaking rich. I mean, come on now. I mean, you're going to put in the time. You might as well maximize your, you know, your income and minimize the blood, sweat, and tears to acquire that income and serve more people with less time, energy, and effort. If you really care about serving people and making a bigger impact and a bigger difference in your market and in your community and in the world and for your for your family, why not produce more results with less effort? That's what this is all about. Like I said before, there's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way, guys. You know, you don't get a, a big uh, happy face sticker on your on your chest just for working 80 hours a week for the same result we could get for 20 hours a week. So no. let's 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 get you maximum income with the least amount of effort. That's what this is about. Now, the other thing that I noticed about why loan officers tend not to get great results when reaching out to realtors. Number one, they're doing caveman method. Number two, they have a lame ass value proposition. They're calling the same realtors every Monday. They, there's no, there's no um, meaningful reason for the realtor to want to work with them. And the third reason I've found too, if their strategy is on point, but they're still failing, is that they lack competence, confidence, and certainty. Yes. So in other words, they can have a kick-ass game plan uh, they can have all the tools in the world, but if they got a leaky toolbox, we got a problem, right? A lot of these guys, we ram their toolbox full of kick-ass 21st century, wicked effective tools. But if they come to the table with doubt, fear, inadequacy, lack of certainty, and they're showing up with their tail between their legs, it ain't going to work. Well, so I, tell, tell us about that, Chris, in terms of the need for certainty and confidence when making this process, you know, fly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, once you see, once loan officers see that, see, the 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 issue has always been the realtors on the top of the pyramid, right? They're right. They're, they're at the they're at the top of the pyramid, you know, hail 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 the realtor, etc. And and we're know, groveling, we're groveling, hoping for handouts. Right, right, right. And so, you know, when you make that call with desperation because you need that realtor it it shows right and so and and not only does it show it comes over the phone but it also shows um in your lack of or your your not lack of but your abundance of call reluctance you won't you don't you won't make the call even if it's um you know like even if it's your your 40 realtors you call on a monday morning right the difference that I see in people that are confident, that are, um, you know, that that know with certainty that th they know how to and help. They know not only do they know how to help their, you know, help their partners, but they've implemented the system in their own practice as well, and that's the reason why they can help the mm -hmm. the the, uh, the realtors. The difference that I see is they know that yes, the realtor and referral partner is a, um, is a key ingredient in, you know, in growing your business, but shit, we teach these guys to go direct to consumer as well. So if I've got a, if I've got a realtor that like, that is giving me a hard time, I don't, I'll just spend more money and go direct to the consumer instead mm -hmm. of helping them grow their business. I'm not saying that, like, I don't want anybody to just go direct to the consumer because I think over the long term that the pillar of referral partner slash realtor partner is a is a is a one is one that you need, you know. But getting direct to the consumer and knowing how to do it it changes your mentality. 
So mm-hmm. if a realtor's like, no, so you know what? I, no, I already got a real. That's fine. That, that's fine. I, I, I'm getting 15 leads a week. I, I'll just give them to another realtor. And so yeah. when you have that, when you have that mentality, it changes everything. It really yes. does. It yeah. does. And so they co- become more confident. They become more certain. They the call reluctance goes away. You know when people when people reach out. You know. Um, it, it just changes your mindset. And, and so when, when that pe- pendulum shifts from, Hey, I'm being a pain in the ass when I'm calling these realtors to, Hey, listen, when I call, when, when I call on them, they reach back out to me based upon my automation. Once I pitch them, if they don't want it, screw them. Cause I got 15 others that do. Right. right. Well, yeah. by the way, I vetted them out. It's not like 15 others that are brand new to the business. So I think, you know, I, I think that's really the difference. It's just the mindset shift from, hey, I'm a commodity to no, 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 I'm a needed resource. And if you don't, I'm just going to your competitor. I, I've actually said that. Hey, yeah. listen, I don't care less, Steve. I, I really don't, I, I don't care whether or not I'd love to help you out. But if you're not going to be open to it, that's fine. So-and-so from Remax is. So I've heard great things about you, but if you don't want to go forward, I'll just, you know, go after your competition. Right, right, exactly. And so you say that in a different in a different manner. But at the end of the day, once you have that confidence, it changes your behavior. You actually, start liking the business a little bit more. True. Imagine that, hey, when uh, right. instead of your you chasing the realtor, they're chasing you. Instead of them interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Instead of uh, you needing them, they need you. And instead of you groveling for their business, they're groveling for your business. Imagine that. Imagine that actually making a little difference in how much you enjoy your business day to day. Considering a good chunk of your business should be coming from real estate agents if you want to dominate the purchase market. It's game changing, guys. It's game changing to own your power and your dignity and to have the cookie in your hand. No longer is the cookie in the real estate agent's hand. It's in your hand. You call the shots. You're in control. You got the cookie. Now they need you more than you need them. How's that for flipping the script, right? As far as I'm concerned, anything less is doing it the freaking hard way. And I'm a big fan of doing it the smart way, not the hard way. So, uh, yeah, it kind of reminds me this whole confidence piece and this whole detachment piece where, you know, I'm cool if you want to roll with me, but if you don't, I'm cool with that too. I got plenty of backup. Kind of reminds me of the quintessential ugly guy, the short, ugly guy with the super hot, taller girlfriend or wife or whatever. And all the dudes are like, how the heck did he get her? Right. It's like the Marvel. It's like the seventh wonder of the world. How the heck did he get her? And nine times out of 10, one of the golden threads woven in all those stories of the you know, short, ugly dude with this beautiful, stunning woman is that he's got this chutzpah factor. He's got this confidence factor. He's got this swagger factor. It might be in a tightly packed but ugly uh, package, but this guy's got swagger factor. He's got this twinkle in his eye. He's got pep in his step. He's got confidence. It just oozes out of his pores. And that's something you can't manufacture necessarily. Um, There is a piece where you do need to have some tools in the toolbox. Lord knows it's not just delusional optimism. Maybe they've gone through the fire and back. Maybe they've gone through trials and tribulations and they've they've had circumstances of adversity that have uh, they've allowed that adversity to refine them as opposed to define them, to make them better as opposed to bitter, to make them stronger, just like the lump of uh, a dirt that ends up turning into a brilliant diamond under pressure o- over millions of years or whatnot. Um, that coal, it could just be dirt, but under the right pressure and circumstance, it becomes this brilliant diamond. So we don't know all the circumstances and all the situations necessarily that cause these people to attract what seems to be better than what they deserve circumstances. But Lord knows there is a situation in there that we can learn from. And I think what it is, is that we need to bring our absolute best to our own ability to see ourselves in a light that gives us confidence. I think a lot of times we show up 
undermining our confidence. We show up with all kinds of limitations and, and belief systems where we're cutting ourselves down all day, where we're saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I didn't come from the right school. My parents didn't give me the right opportunities. I didn't come from the right neighborhoods. I don't have enough in the bank account. Um, you know, I don't have enough experience. Uh, I don't have enough marketing knowledge, whatever it is. And so that mindset is continually undermining. And all of a sudden we bring that into our overtures with realtors. And do they want to be hanging with someone who's a not enough addict? They want to, I mean, they already have fears and doubts of their own. Do they want to be hanging with someone else who's spewing this negativity and this doubt and this fear on them? I don't think so. You want to attract champions. You got to start to show up like a champion, which means you need to work on your own mindset. You need to become a better version of yourself every day and really replace that stinking thinking limiting belief system that's holding you back from your childhood. I had it too. I mean, to you know, share a quick story, when I was in high school, believe it or not, back then I had curls. Things have changed a little bit since then, but back then I had curls. And I was so narcissistically preoccupied with my looks because I thought that I needed to be good looking to be popular. I need to be have my hair just right for people to like me and to be liked by the girls and respected by the dudes. So I would literally spend half my day in the bathroom. Bathroom. I pretend that I'm washing my hands or, you know, taking a leak or whatever. But really, someone would walk in and I'd, you know, go from you know priming my hair to washing my hands, pretending I was washing my hands. That's literally how obsessed I was. I did this for years. They called me bathroom boy, right? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, bathroom boy. And no, the thing about these beliefs is when you own a belief called I'm not good enough or I need to look better in order to be liked or adored or appreciated or be, to be popular or to be accepted, it's never enough, right? It's just never enough. No matter how much priming and no matter how much – Know how much you try to manipulate the situation, it's never enough. We see that with celebrities who go over the deep end with, uh, you know, getting nose jobs and face jobs and this job and that job. And then they get into drugs and all this other stuff. And it just becomes this end endless cycle. And what I came to realize is the turning point for me in my life was when I realized that who I am is enough. And I realized that these limiting beliefs were something that I actually can choose to either continue to build evidence for that I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, and be a self-fulfilling prophecy that I'm not good enough and live the rest of my freaking life as a narcissist, feeling sorry for myself and being a victim and proving to myself that I'm not enough or choose a new path called I'm perfectly equipped to win. I was born to win. I was made to win and I'm more than enough and start to build that belief and start to build evidence for and references for that belief. That was the beginning of transformation for me when I received that belief that God made me just the way I'm supposed to be, that he doesn't make any junk and that he has a special plan and purpose for my life and to embrace that truth and start to build out a new pathway, a new trajectory, a new um, destiny out of owning that belief and building upon that belief and getting references for that belief. So I think a big piece that is often overlooked in marketing as a loan officer and in, in business as a loan officer is what's happening between your two ears and how you yeah. see yourself. Because rarely will the quality of your results exceed the quality of your self-image and what you believe you're capable and worthy of. So I don't know why necessarily I, I was inspired to share that because that wasn't part of the uh, initial agenda for this, <laughs> uh, to this call. But you know, we're talking about why real estate agents won't give you the time of day. That's the topic at hand today. The topic at hand is the real raw truth. Realtors won't tell you why they're not sending you all their buyers. One of the reasons that even they don't know is that you don't truly believe you deserve it. And they're getting the energetic transmission of doubt, fear, lack of certainty, lack of confidence. And you're repelling them by virtue of that belief. And now you're proving yourself right because they're not giving you the time of day. They're not giving you the business. They're ignoring you. And then again, it builds on that belief system. You're not enough. You're not good enough. You can't do it. You don't have what it takes. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, folks. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, you know, just just mindset is such a big thing in, in every facet of, of, uh, of life, but more so um, 
in sa- in sales and marketing, right? So Cheers. if you've got if you've got that that confidence and that that swagger and that you know and that belief system that listen, I can really help you, Mister Realtor. Um, and if that realtor doesn't want your help, then and knowing that you have ten others that want it, then it makes it makes the life of a loan officer that really it should be they should change the, the the name by the way it should be i don't even know marketing officer or something like that like so but the the life of the loan officer a little bit better right and so mm-hmm. and then that and along with like you know the, the trials and tribulations of being a loan officer you know there's there's a bunch of different reasons why you can have a bad attitude could be that you're you know that that a realtor kind of kicked you in the 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 proverbial ass like 10 times today every time you talk to to a different realtor could be that two loans just blew up could be that your processor you know didn't show up for like there's so many different reasons right plenty of storms to face on the front line of the capital of that but when you have systems in place and and doran and i talked about this the other day in regards to my my business it's like when you have systems in place where you remove yourself from from where those fires can be and you only focus on on the the revenue producing activities then your life gets a whole shitload better and especially when those uh w- when you're spending your time and energy in a place where you know that you're confident and that you'll be able to help people so yeah. i think that's the biggest um you know that that's the biggest thing it's you know when when you sum it all up you know why realtors aren't giving you business a, a lot of it can be mindset a lot of it is the re- approach. A lot of it is your upfront market, your, your upfront value proposition. A lot of it is you, you know, loan officers not taking the time because they just don't want to see the forest of the trees, but not taking the time to truly find out what a need is and then sell to the need. Because let me tell you something. Everybody has the, the tools at hand. Most don't know how to package them correctly, but everybody's got... The, the, the same tools okay mm-hmm. you can you can you know you can choose to learn a little bit and package them and go after it confidently or you can sit back and wonder why the hell you're still at 60 grand or 70 grand or 80 grand or 100 grand or whatever whatever the case may be that's insufficient income to support you and your family like that's like you you can either take one road or the other like it, it's really simple life is very mm-hmm. simple you know, I was talking, we own a software program and I was talking to one of my, one of my partners in, in it the other day. He's like, well, how can we, like, how can we, how can we get to this point where we can sell it? I go, it's really simple. You can take two roads, two roads. You can spend money to get more users <clears throat> and then sell it. Or you can sit back and bitch about it. Right. <laughs> it's the same road. It's the same road in the loan officer world. You can either spend time, right, and energy in processes that you can, you know, go out and, and, and get more business, or you can sit back and bitch about it, right? And if you don't either have way, money, you're going to pay the price. <laughs> either way, you're going to pay. It doesn't matter. You might, you know, you, you go one road, you might pay the price of a great life. And frankly, like, and everybody that says, that, you know, money's the root of all evil, there's, you know, they're full of shit. It makes a lot of difference when you're able to to pay your bills and money's relative to your overall situation. But <clears throat> when you have the financial freedom, let's call it that, to not have to worry about a realtor bitching and complaining and 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 a deal falling apart versus you hang on every deal is is you know you're you're hanging on to every single deal because you got to pay your mortgage and if it blows up you're screwed. So yeah. you can you can take the path of having an ab- having abundance. Or take the patch of the path of bitching, and it's a really yeah. simple process, right? So, um, and everybody has that ability. Everybody, it doesn't matter who it is. You have the ability to take, you know, take whatever road you want. Um, some you need direction, and some you don't. Uh, the majority need direction. So, reminds me of that saying: if you think education is expensive. Try ignorance. (laughs) (laughs) Or as Jim Rohn once aptly said, discipline weighs an ounce, regret weighs a ton. 
Yes. You're going to pay the price either way. You're going to pay it on the front end or the back end. Yep. So Re- true. discipline weighs uh, an ounce, regret weighs a ton. So guys, we've uh, we've covered a lot of ground today. I hope you guys have gotten some value from the time we've had together, some reminders perhaps, as well as some new dendrites firing and new directions on how you can start to build up your confidence and your competence in strategically attracting top producing realtors, uh, using 21st century technology, put the shovel away, pull out the excavator, be able to leverage your time, being able to uh, have a compelling hook that allows you to show up where the realtor needs you more than you need them, to be able to have that swagger factor, that mojo, that confidence factor, that Conor McGregor swagger factor, where you know that you know that you know that the realtor needs you more than you need them. There's a lot of different components to that. And it's a lot easier said than done if you don't have the proven path. You know, it's like if, if you just run out to the gunfight with a butter knife, it ain't going to go so well, no matter how confident you might be. That's called delusional optimism. So there's a certain amount of strategy you need. I mean, if you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a problem, right? So it's important that you have the right strategy. And if you're feeling like this has been good fodder for impetus, motivation, inspiration, moving in the right direction, but you're still needing clarity on strategy and you're needing to get better equipped so you can show up to the gunfight with an Uzi, not a butter knife, then what I'd suggest you do, if you're indeed wanting to add an extra 100K plus to your annual income, you're looking for a way to work smarter as opposed to just harder. You're looking for a proven plan and professional support to do that. I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call with either myself or one of my consultants at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. What we'll do is we'll hop on the phone together. We'll have a real frank, um, transparent conversation where we lift up the hood on your business and we just look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now in your business, where do you want to be in your business? What's your goal? What's your ambition? What's your vision? And then what we're going to do if we have the right synergy and if it looks like we can help you is we will show you how to bridge that gap, how to turn decades into days, how to condense timeframes and how to get way more done in way less time and accelerate your speed to your outcome. If we can help you, frankly, we will be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, mark my words, you will leave with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll even have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful, worthwhile to you, I definitely invite you to Strike while the iron is hot and book a call on our calendar at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I promise you it'll be one of the most uh, confidence building and clarity inducing conversations you've had in a very, very, very long time, regardless of the outcome and regardless if we decide to work together. All right, guys. So again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I've been hanging with the real deal, the Chris, rather the real deal, Chris Real. Facebook ads expert extraordinaire. Apparently, I've been flapping my lips a little too long because I'm starting to trip on them. So uh, this is a good time to sign off. Chris, it's been fun, man. Thanks for hanging with me today. Yeah, man, no problem. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. All right, guys. So remember, the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which you know and that which you do. It's not enough to just to hear this stuff. That ain't going to do Jack to Lee squat. We get paid on done, not begun. So, you know, winners take impact, perfect action while losers are still polishing up their perfect plans, just trying to get it just right. I implore you to go out there and just take massive action, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action with positive expectation, with confidence, with enthusiasm. And chances are you're going to get massive results, guys. So be blessed. Keep being awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Doran Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us. Take care.